fee. I'm Vivek, and up on stage with me is Andrew and Emily. We are from Hacker Rank. When I was in school in India, I used to be addicted to these competitive programming sites like ACM and Topcoder. It wasn't until I participated in a machine learning hackathon at Amazon, my first real programming job, that I realized how much fun it'll be to have a competitive site for real world problems. Now, sites like ACM and Topcoder focus on a small set of textbook algorithms. Whereas in the real world, you work on things ranging from machine learning to artificial intelligence to distributed systems to build real products. At HackerRank, we are building the competitive league for hackers to solve real world problems. Let's see what HackerRank looks like. Now, every hacker has a type of challenge that he really loves. It might be image processing for you, it might be distributed systems for someone. HackerRank, we're going to have a variety of challenges classified into 10 levels of difficulty. The difficulty level of a challenge is determined by the number of users who solve it, which means the ranking is completely dynamic. Now, I'm a level four hacker, and um, I want to like challenge myself. So I'm going to choose a machine learning challenge on level eight, and this challenge is called Cora answer classifier. So what does Cora have to do with this? Now, to make the experience as real as possible, we are inviting companies to give us real data sets or problems that they are actually working on. So for instance, everyone knows that Cora is known for its high quality content on the web, and that's because they have complex machine learning algorithms to figure out what is a good answer and a bad answer. Now here, they are giving you a training data set anonymized, of course, and you can submit your machine learning algorithm and benchmark it against the best algorithm here. And you can just like, keep tuning it forever. This is one challenge that machine learning enthusiasts will just love. I'm a, I'm a machine learning enthusiast myself. So let, let me show you another type of challenge. And this is more fun. This is, this is a bot versus bot challenge, where you have to write a bot, and it's going to play with all the other bots in our system and it's gonna figure out how good your artificial intelligence logic is. And this game is called anti-chess. It's actually the opposite of chess. You have to lose your pieces as fast as possible. And um, you can write your, code, write your code right inside the editor. So maybe I'm just gonna like, show you how this works. So I'm gonna like, begin coding. So it is like um, um, the, it's a check. Eight, eight cross eight chess board. So uh, I'll see how much I can code before the music ends. Uh, so, um, and I'm just like taking in the array as the input um, and I'm just pushing it back. So you can compile and code right inside our interface and um, start working on it. So I don't think I'll be able to finish coding. So I, I don't want to like, press. okay, I fail. So, um, I'm gonna just copy the code that I wrote yesterday night on this, so uh, just for the demo purposes. <laughs> so, um, all right, so you can like compile and test right here, and uh, you can choose any language that you want, like C++, Java, um, Java, Python, and so on. So, um, and once you compile and test, um, ideally you should get the output immediately, but uh, maybe there's some network issues or my code is really bad, so I have to like figure out how to, how to write better code. Uh, all the engineers out at HackerRank, maybe you should do better. Um, so once you compile and test, you can actually see how the code works. And you can play it with any one. So for example, let's say you go to Stanford, and um, now you can play the user bot against anyone. So this is a game between a Stanford and a Berkeley grad of anti-chess. So we take care of all the visualization and stuff. So, and if you're from India, you can play in India versus Pakistan anti-chess. So this is like the Olympics of programming. And this is just one type of challenge, again. When we did this, um, we, got, we got a lot of feedback from users saying, how does someone write a better bot? So we decided to put up, archive the challenges every two weeks, and release all the code snippets so that hackers can learn from others to write optimal algorithms. We put this up, we built this, and launched on Hacker News. We got 
10,000 hackers signed up who played over two and a half million games in just one week. They spent on an average of 82 minutes on our site every day. Hackers have a competitive spirit. Even Zuckerberg and Adam Angelo were addicted to top coder when they were in school. Now, they no longer do it because they're working on complex problems, but their competitive spirit is still alive. And that's why they conduct hackathons and programming contests. Stripe's recent programming contest attracted 16,000 security enthusiasts. Netflix challenge, machine learning challenge, 100,000 programmers. At HackerRank, we're centralizing this. We are building the largest collection of the world's most interesting problems for hackers to solve. Imagine if this room had all the world's best hackers sitting here right now and coding. The power of that room is incredibly high. We are building that incredibly powerful room online at HackerRank. Let's start hacking. It's live right now. Thank you so much. So as a hacker, I compete, or oh, former hacker. Uh, I compete, and I get my ranking. What's, how do I so transport that? How do I use that? Yeah, um, so this is, right now, right now our focus is to actually build a very engaging platform for hackers. So um, it's more like, and, and the ranking is also very relative, so which means you write a code and how, how close you are to the top determines which level you go or how many points you are. So this is more like you can actually learn something new or you can actually compete for fun in real world problems, like how you used to do in ACM and top quarter contests. So that's our focus right now, um, yeah. So, so to pick up on that question, um, obviously I'm uh, really intrigued by anybody where you can identify it more granularly what skills are, especially in this category. But what I'm, what I'm missing still is whether you're trying to get people to establish this associated with their real identity that then becomes something that can be parlayed into their job prospects mm -hmm. and their productivity, or is it something about just being in this environment and taking on challenges, et cetera? Yeah, so we, we, don't, we don't want to be a job site. Um, oh. um, Actually, um, we started interviewstreet.com, and uh, which, was, which was a job site to match programmers with companies, and we put in all the learnings that we had into HackerRank. So, and we realized that like jobs is definitely important, but what brings in hackers is the feeling of solving an interesting something and learning something new. Sorry, I didn't mean to focus too much on jobs, but it's more, are you trying to let me build up a credential that is portable? Mm -hmm. Or uh, so you're mapping it to real identities, or am I creating my own little identity system of hackers and in this environment, if everybody comes, I can start to see where I fall. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So if you're a level 10 machine learning hacker, you're like considered, yes, you're a really good guy in machine learning. That's the idea. I, I, think, I think the point is that um, I, don't, I, don't understand, like, I don't know if real people really understand what it is that you're, you're trying to solve. Like, I get it, uh, because I, I, I know the audience that you're going after. Uh, you know, that they like to compete, they like to, you know, rank against each other and stuff, but I'm not quite sure I understand what the business model is here, and you can explain that. The other thing, I, I just want to make an observation. I, I, I'm a bit of a, a branding freak, so this is just kind of an uh, observation. I noticed your logo is a little different from your shirt, uh, from your URL. It'd be good to see some consistency there. Just, just a quick, you know, kind okay, of... Okay, yeah. sure. But otherwise, cool. I, <laughs> please tell me about your business. Sure, I mean, yeah. um, so basically, like, uh, the business model is like, like if, we, if we get like an engaged set of users, uh, like if you're gonna get like 10,000 hackers coming to your site every day, and if a company is gonna put up a challenge, that's probably the best um, advertisement for the company without uh, losing the sanctity of the site, which means the hackers also love challenges, real world challenges, and the company also adds to that. Who owns the code? Well, um, we've, not, we've not gone that deep, but uh, the problem that the challenges that are put on live is not something that the companies are not able to solve when they are trying for help, but it's actually something to like test. Like we, we, we are doing machine learning. Can you just come and beat my bot? So uh, that's the way it is right now. So I buy the premise that people like to compete. I buy the premise that people like problem solving. So I could see a site like this being super addictive. Um, even though I've heard it asked twice, I still don't have my head around, maybe it's the bad acoustics up here or something, but like where you intend to build a business around this, because I could very clearly see it being something in recruiting. It's not your ambition, I'm not saying you should, but that seems to be how a lot of these sites end up going. It could be something where, um, you know, I'd get some sort of accreditation which I'm paying for, it could be, 
that uh, the companies are paying you to have their problems solved. I didn't really hear any of that, so what's in your head, or do you just want to see where it goes? No, sure, I mean, like, uh, as I said, right now our focus is to get as many engaged hackers as possible, but the different business models is one, as I said, that it, if it acts as a great, um, great source of like, advertisement for a company if you get enough hackers that we are actually solving this cool problem in our company. And for hackers, if you're gonna say that whoever beats a Quora engineer's machine learning algorithm, you get a 20 minute office hours with Adam Angelo, or I mean, it's, it's, it's a great thing for a hacker. Maybe, maybe they, they're gonna eventually pull him in as an engineer or they're gonna hire him, but um, it acts as a great source of connecting um, real world problems by companies and hackers. So is your answer that you just don't wanna think about it yet? We want, to, we want to build an engaged community first, and then we'll think about it. Because I think if you look at Code Academy, which is operating in that field as well, clearly a lot of companies have found that platform useful for training on APIs. And almost like they had the same numbers and, and crazy growth at the very beginning of their, um, their launch. And so a lot of companies have reached out to say, well, can you actually do courses around our APIs? And so it's used in the training sort of uh, world. Or you have the personal reputation, or you have the, the um, hey, if I get a really sort of high-ranked uh, hacker rank in, uh, on your system, then clearly I'm going to be uh, uh, sort of a target of potential job opportunities. But at some point, there needs to be more than hey, it's fun, because at, after a while, people won't see why they should sort of keep on going, because they have other things to do. Yeah. Be my, my concern. Yeah, sure. I mean, um yeah, it, it will eventually act as like a very uh, credible stuff. Like, I mean, you're a, you're a level seven guy in artificial intelligence means it means that you're really good at good at this. So, but th that's to build that, you need to ensure that the components on the site actually engages hackers first before mm -hmm. um, jumping into other things. That's, that's and building up your personal reputation could definitely be something uh, really worthy. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the idea. But you have to do something with it. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah. say if I were to throw in my bias, obviously having a lot of this hashed through in different contexts at LinkedIn for years. I think the build up the reputation piece is really interesting and I'd love to see how you're going to match that to people's identities outside of your hacker name on your site. Yep. Um, and then if you do start going down that third business model that Mark was talking about, I think that you'll have to d drill in a lot more about who owns the intellectual property, how do you expose yeah. problems. I mean, look back to what is it, eight or 10 years ago, Innocentive. Now obviously, the pharmaceutical world is probably the worst place to look for IP problems, mm -hmm. but the, the notion of figuring out what can you even put out as a problem if you're solving something that's gonna be valuable to a company is a hard problem to solve. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, sure, I mean. We're, we're unfortunately out of time, uh, oh, but right. uh, thank you guys very much. That's Hacker Ray. Thank you so much.